Good afternoon. This meeting of the Trenton Board of Education is called to order. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the and republic, to the republic for, which it stands, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Roll call, Jean Bowie. Present. Nicole Bourgeois. Present. Eddie Daniels Lane. Present. Yolanda Lopez. Absent. Teron McKnight. Absent. Gerald Trueheart. Present. Jeannie Weaklem. Present. Sade Williams. Absent. We have a quorum. Okay. The New Jersey Sunshine Law. The New Jersey Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right to the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted on. On the rules of this act, the Trenton Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting by publicizing the date, time, and place, therefore posted on the webpage, the Times, and the Star Ledger. Formal action will not take place at this meeting. Mission statement. All students will graduate with a vision for their future, motivated to learn continually and prepare to succeed in their choice of college or career. Um, at this time, I need a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, Jean Bowie. Yes. Nicole Bourgeois. Yes. Yolanda Lopez. Absent. Teron McKnight. Yes. Gerald Trueheart. Yes. Jeannie Weaklem. Yes. Sade Williams. Absent. Addie Daniels Lane. Yes. Okay. Motion passed. Time, thank you. Um, at this time, we'll have a few remarks from our acting superintendent, Mr. Alfonso Yano. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak this evening. Uh, thank you, members of the community and our Board of Education, teachers that I see on the call. Thank you again for being here this evening and also our parents. I want to say a quick thank you uh, to all of our team members who made the reopening of our schools a resounding success. Uh, my team, we uh, went to every building. We visited multiple times between yesterday and today. It was exciting to see students in our buildings interacting with their peers, interacting with our teachers, our administrators, our power professionals, our secretaries, our, custo our custodians. It was a wonderful time. It was a wonderful day and we continue. Uh, so today we had the second day of our A cohort. Tomorrow, all students will be virtual. Uh, will receive their instruction remotely. And then Thursday, we welcome our B cohort. So we are looking forward to bringing in the second half of students who have selected to be uh, uh, hybrid. We know that our numbers will continue to improve as uh, we move forward. And next week, we'll continue to have more students arrive in their A cohorts and in their B cohorts. So it's been a very successful opening. I just want to thank everyone, the Board of Education, all of our teachers, all of our administrators, everyone who made this day possible, productive, successful for our students. It's been a resounding up, uh, round of positivity from all of the teachers I've been speaking to in our schools and all of our administrators who have been very excited to see our students return. Exciting times and we will continue to look forward. Again, I uh, want to say thank you to all of our teachers. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. I know many of our administrators have special events set up in their buildings. So thank you uh, for all the work that you do. Without you, we would not be able to make this a successful journey from remote to hybrid. And, and uh, we continue to partner with you as we move forward. So again, thank you. And to our Board of Education, thank you for all the work that you've done supporting this process to make sure to insist that we bring students in for in-person instruction. We have been you focused on the plan, the, the SOPs, the safety measures, and it's just been exciting to see it all come to all come together in the last two days. And again, another thank you to uh, Mr. Mosley, the Buildings and Grounds team, all of our custodians have been working tirelessly to make sure everything is ready to go and ready to go again on next Thursday. So uh, President Lane, just wanna turn it back to you and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, uh, Mr. Yano. 
And with that said, uh, we're going to move, we don't have committee reports this evening, so we're just going to move into the um, public participation section. And with that, I am simply going to say, I certainly echo the sentiments of um, Acting Superintendent Yano, and certainly um, we do appreciate all the efforts that have gone into um, getting to schools, getting our students back in, um, in person. And again, we appreciate all the hard work that has been done by everyone. So again, thank you. The, Board Public Commentary Advisory. This again is a note to um, individuals who have signed up to um, speak for this evening. The Trenton Public School District welcomes the attendance and comments from all members of the public at its meetings. This public comment period is your time to be heard on any school or school district issue that a member of the public feels may be of concern to the residents of the school district. Each person who signed up to comment will have five minutes. You'll be notified when your five minutes are up or close to being up. You cannot yield your time to another person. When it is your turn to speak, please address all of your comments to the board president. Please conduct yourself in a respectful and courteous manner. For anyone whose comments or actions either harass, intimidate, or threaten the safety of any person, we will provide you with a warning or immediately end your comment time. Also, if you curse, use vulgar language, or make personal attacks, we will provide you with a warning or end your comment time. Comments that adhere to these guidelines will not be interrupted. Also, we ask that the members of the public not interrupt the speaker during their public comment. If you have any questions, please ask your question during your five minute comment period. After the, excuse me, after the public comment period is closed, the board superintendent or designee will address your questions to the extent provided by law. That is the um, board public commentary advisory. And I would like to note that um, tonight as in before, um, we do have a number of people who have signed up to speak in a limited amount of time in which to speak. So I would um, ask if you can to um, limit your remarks to give others an opportunity to share their thoughts. So again, at this time, we'll begin our public commentary and it begins with Ms. Marilyn Hester. Good evening, board members, leadership team, and Mr. Yano. I'm speaking tonight because I was not afforded the opportunity to do so last week. Uh, I am prompted to speak because I am disgusted by the actions of this team. I have been in education for well over 23 years and never received a letter of insubordin insubordination. Even worse, this was for working. I am speaking because I stand with my union. I refuse to be bullied and intimidated into coming to into, into coming into unsafe and unhealthy working environments. I see these meetings are still being held via Zoom. I sent emails to each of the board members, yet only Mrs. Lane replied. Thank you, Mrs. Lane, for that personal courtesy. Now, Mr. Yano and Mrs. Howard, to dock teachers pay for work performed is heartless. How do you live with yourselves? The only other thing I want to say is, uh, Mr. Yano, again, is this your style of leader, leader, leadership? Sorry, leader, <laughs> leadership, fear, and intimidation. Well, all I can say to you is good luck to you on your new job. Thanks. Thank you, um, Ms. Hester. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, Ms. Mackenzie Kelly. Ms. Mackenzie Kelly. Okay, so we're going to hold if she appears and we'll call her back. Next person is Ms. Marlena Ventura. Okay, hold on. Sorry, hold on, I'm here. Just give me a second, I'm trying to <laughs> fix everything. All right, all right, let me put my camera on. All right, there we go. Can you see me? All right. Uh, Yes, <laughs> okay. I, had to, I had to find um, you. Here we go. President Lane, board members, staff, and community. I wish I could say um, good evening tonight, but it is far from a good evening. Today was the second day of our hybrid reunion and or lack thereof. Now, if you believe acting superintendent Yano, everything went so, so smoothly, like, you know, butter on bread. Well, I was on the front line. I was there, I was at a door. I was waiting for my kids and there was utter chaos and I'm being very kind by just calling it chaos because my descriptive would have been a cuss word and I don't want to get cut off. Just a little background. 
into my teaching past, um, just so you don't know, and you can understand where I'm coming from. I did not go to school for education. I have a bachelor's degree in history and a minor in politics. And I went the alternative route to get my certification. And then eventually I got two masters, one in early childhood and one in teaching reading. That's great. But I have to tell you this, I was better prepared to walk into my very first day of teaching kindergarten 22 years ago than I was when I walked in on Monday to begin synchronous teaching. The professional development of the last two weeks did not help or did not give me any guidance as to what to do. Let that sink in for a second. A teacher with 22 years experience felt better prepared on her first day of ever teaching than I did on Monday when I entered um, hybrid. Over the last two days, I felt like I've accomplished absolutely nothing. It has taken well over 30 minutes on Monday and over 20 minutes today to get between 45 and 53 students into our building. And then, you know, I teach kindergarten, so my little cherubs had to eat. Since they're five, I refuse to let them put out their Chromebooks before they eat, because within entering in my room a few short minutes, while I was trying to help out the online kids, they managed to spill a bottle of water all over the floor. Another kid placed an open container of yogurt in his book bag and he had a mess. <sighs> Where was my para? My para resigned two weeks ago. I am by myself in my room. And yes, my principal knows and my association knows. So here's the thing. First grade teachers and second grade teachers don't have bars either and they're alone. So I understand their struggle. Well, to keep calm, I chose to put my kids on Zerner Dreambox, the ones that were online, while I helped the kids in class do breakfast. It was quick thinking on my part, but here's the thing. Some of just even the Google because I could hear them on my speakers chit-chatting and goofing around. And some of them just logged off altogether. Why? Because they could not see this face on their screen. Why? Because I was supervising the kids eating the breakfast. The two incidents that happened were while I was giving instructions to the kids online. So after an administrator from downtown came and in I to get my, atten just my attendance, and, and disrespectful and, and that's what I can't deal with. Excuse me. Someone needs to mute. Thank you. Um, a, an administrator came in from downtown to get my attendance. Um, and then shortly after the nurse came in, in, and we were halfway through the day. What did the nurse have? The nurse had a letter to go home to a parent who didn't fill out the COVID form, who didn't fill out the COVID form. That was repeated again today, but instead of one child, it was three. I wanna know how three kids entered the building, mm -hmm. entered my class and entered my room, because again, I, without having filled out the COVID form, Hey, Mr. Valeri, because I know you're listening. I remember sitting quietly, which is very rare for me, in a reopening committee meeting. I remember you saying that most of the parents will fill out those COVID forms. And here we are with my parent liaison spending the better portion of today printing out letters to go home to parents so they have the information on how to get into power school to print out or do the COVID survey. How do I feel safe when I know co protocols are not consistent? And if they are consistent, they're not being practiced. How do I feel safe when yesterday my room was like a central station during rush hour with administrators and custodians in, in and out all day, and today I barely saw anyone? How am I to feel safe when we allow everyone from the uh, anyone in the building not knowing if they filled out that COVID form? That's tracking issue. That, that, that's tracing issue. That's a problem. A few weeks ago, I talked about my anxiety. Mr. And Ventura, I, doctor's I to, uh, remind you, you have about a half a minute left. Okay, I'm almost done. I had a long conversation with my doctor today. I'm seriously considering having my doctor put me out for the next six weeks. I have the days. My heart says, don't do it. You need to be in school for your students. My body has been telling me to stay home with every single panic attack I get. Yesterday, I had a severe panic attack and an ugly cry before I picked up my students. And today, I was shaking when I walked in the building. 
Today I worked up, I was all worked up so much so that when my doctor took my blood pressure, she was upset with what she saw. And I'm on blood pressure meds. So here is the thing. We are not doing what's right by our kids because the teachers cannot teach synchronously and still be able to teach the kids in the class. The teachers are stressed out, are feeling very anxious, and you chose not to make the right decision. And that's a shame because you are virtual. You are safe at home and we're in the classroom being exposed. Shame on you all. Thank you, Ms. Ventura. Uh, moving on to our next person. Our next person, our next speaker is Ms. Adrian Agnoli. Hi, Ms. Lane. Thank you so much for getting back to me with my email last month. I Ms. appreciate your, your it. Your audio is not working well. Um, that suspected mold, actually, um, it, the mold itself was not. Uh, Ms. Agnoli, can you try a different connection? You're not connecting well. It's not. Okay. Um. Can you hear me better now? No. <laughs> Are you able to hear me better now? No. So why don't you keep trying, and I'll go to somebody else and come back okay. to you. Okay, I'll come back to you. All right. So um, <laughs> next person would be um, Miss. Okay, I'm going to definitely come back on my phone. Okay. All right. All right. So let me try Miss Pulliam, and we'll come back to Miss Agnoli. Lisa Pulliam. Hi. I'm here. Give me one second. I'm sorry. Sure. Okay. Uh, good evening, community, board members, President Lane, staff, and um, Superintendent Yano. Um, I would on. I'd like to address professionalism. I am teaching 24 years. I figured out how to teach online. I was professional about it. My family and I upgraded our Wi-Fi last March. We spent money to make sure I was able to get online. If I wasn't able to get online, I went on my, my phone. I used my data, which I spent money on. But yet you guys feel it's okay to take my money from me when we're working all the time. My kids had no idea that we weren't, that there was a problem, that we weren't supposed to be in the, that we were supposed to be in the building. My students had no idea. But now let's get to the professionalism of everyone else. And I sent to any, I sent my, what I wanted to speak last week to everyone and I didn't get a response about it because there was no letter that went home to my parents. I am a third and fourth self-contained special ed teacher. I have an excellent relationship with my parents, excellent. But this wasn't my job to tell them when they're coming back. Because as of last Monday, Monday morning, there was a letter that went home to all my parents that said, oh, your child is cohort A, your child's cohort B, and your child's cohort C. Well, then I'm finding out later, well, because I have 12 children or less and nobody ever answered if it's 16, I'm allowed to have up to 16 students in my room. Is it a 12 or less cap for the students who come in? Or is it a 16, you know, my 16 cap and I have 12 children. So I can have all my kids come in virtual. I mean, not, not virtual, you know, hybrid. My parents never got a letter. And I find that very unprofessional. But you could send me a letter saying how unprofessional I am when I work every day. I learned so many new things as an older person who's been teaching for over 25 years. I learned every new trick there was out there. I took more than, the, than what I was allowed to be paid for for those workshops in the summer, which I don't even think I got paid for all of them yet. But you know, for all the 10 hours that we were allowed, but I never complained, but you're gonna complain that I didn't show up to the building because it wasn't safe and take my money. 
and you think it's okay that you, nobody contacts my parents to tell them to come every day, but I should use my cell phone and I should call my parents and tell them, how come you didn't come today? I found out you should be here every day because it wasn't my job to tell them Sunday night that they should be there every day. And that third and fourth grade special ed started Monday. Not my job, I'm sorry. That's above my pay grade. Someone else should be doing that. If you're going to take money from me and treat me like an unprofessional, then I will sit back and relax and I will work to my contract and I will not put the extra time in on my personal phone and on my personal time of telling parents all the information they need to know. And when I asked you guys what was going on, not one person got back to me last week when I sent you my email about what I was gonna speak about at the board, about are my, parent, my parents have not been informed yet. This could have been addressed last week, but nobody bothered to read what I sent you. And I think that's sad and unprofessional. I also sent an email that Sunday night before we came back from spring break, questioning all this information. Not one person emailed me back, not my supervisor, nobody from special ed, I didn't get any, I haven't gotten any emails from anyone. I think special ed doesn't even think I exist because I never get any information from them. And this is really pretty sad and unprofessional of the district. And how do you think my kids and parents feel? Put yourself in their shoes. Special ed has every right as a gen ed child to have all the proper information. How dare you? How dare this district do that to my children? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pulliam. Uh, we'll try Ms. Agnoli again. Thank you so much. Is this better, Mrs. Lane? Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm. thank you for responding to my email so quickly. And last month, I was so happy. I mean, you were really so fast. Um, that suspected mold itself was not tested. Uh, Mr. Mosley did come in and they covered it with spackle and I'm still awaiting that mold remediation and the asbestos cleanup report from 2000. I had emailed about it on November 23rd, 2020 to Ms. Howard, Jean Howard and Mr. Mosley. Um, also room A26 downstairs for me, that's closed with a do not enter sign. So if there's mold in that room, is the building safe for the rest of us? I'm questioning that. And in my room, B15, my HEPA air cleaner is not working. Mr. Yano was in yesterday. Um, he looked at it, it wasn't working, but um, no one did anything about it. So we've been informing everyone since Friday that it wasn't working and it's still not working. So Mr. Yano checked that, he knows it's not working. Um, also, the um, temperature taking at Grant, you're supposed to take your temperature with your wrist. Yesterday, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, nobody was there to assist me. Um, I did it today. I wasn't sure about the beep. I wasn't sure where to look. And then everyone in the building kept telling me that their temperatures, the teachers were telling me that their temperatures are all turning out to be 96. So it seems as though the temperature taking check with your wrist is not working properly. So that needs to be checked. Um, also, at the end of the day, I cleaned my classroom. I don't know if you want me to send you pictures, but um, everything, every single cloth that I used turned out to be black. So when I cleaned the desks, the chairs, inside the desks, the floor, and the countertops, everything was black. So I took pictures of that if you want me to forward them to you. Um, and if we could just get the HEPA filter fixed, I, I thought Mr. Yono was on top of that because he actually looked at it yesterday. Um, but no, and I'm, I'm concerned about the mold still in that building, about that asbestos cleanup report from 2000. Um, the mold remediation from 2000. I, I, I had emailed that on November 23rd, 2020. 
So um, that's that's a, still a big concern at Grant. So if you could check out all those things for me, I'd appreciate it. That's it. Thank you so much for all your continued support, Ms. Lane. Um, thank you, Ms. Agnoli. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to move on. Thank you. Um, at this point, we're going to move to our next person, Mr. Stephen Ballas or Ballalis. Stephen Ballas or Ballalis. Okay, so I'm going to move to the next person. Uh, no? Okay, I'm moving to the next person. Um, Aaron Condish. Good evening. Can you hear me? I hear you. Oh, I see you. Yes. Okay. Good evening. My name is Erin Kondash and I teach eighth grade English language arts at Joyce Kilmer School. I am speaking tonight on the issue of docking the teacher's pay. For the sake of perspective, allow me to take us back to March of 2020 when schools closed due to the looming threat of the coronavirus. Teachers were given a few short days to prepare work and upload at least two weeks of virtual assignments, which we did in a speedy fashion. Because we closed in such a hurry, most students were at home without any form of technology to help them access their Google Classrooms. We at Kilmer knew we had dozens of carts full of Chromebooks that would be better served in the hands of our students. So for over a week, my fellow Kilmer staff members and I worked tirelessly to take apart the carts and label the computers. Then we stood outside the school some days in the cold rain and gave them out to families in a drive through distribution. At the end of the year, many of our eighth graders were deprived of their end of year trip, dance and moving up ceremony. So we teachers created a virtual graduation for our students and then later held a drive through celebration where families decorated their cars and graduates received their diplomas, awards and complimentary t-shirts. One staff member even baked specially wrapped cookies for the kids. This academic year, my colleagues and I have worked diligently to provide quality remote instruction. We have worked harder than ever before to reach out to parents and encourage our students. Over the past few months, the eighth grade team of teachers and guidance counselors at Kilmer have been meeting with our eighth graders on an individual basis to review the progress they are making towards moving to the ninth grade. I say all of this not to brag about my eighth grade team or Kilmer school, although I am very proud to be part of the Kilmer family. These efforts by Trenton teachers are more than just anecdotal. They have been happening over and over in most of our schools by most of our staff throughout the entirety of this pandemic. And much of the time we have done these things not for money or any other kind of compensation. We've done it because we care about our students. This past year has been a roller coaster for most of us. Each month has brought new and sometimes conflicting information. In the early days of the pandemic, we were told not to wear masks, and then later told we had to wear masks. For weeks, many of us left our mail and groceries in our garages for 48 to 72 hours for fear of COVID lingering on surfaces. We have seen unpredictable dips and surges in cases as we watched our national death toll pass a half a million. For the last year, all of us have been enrolled in a metaphorical COVID scared straight program. We've been warned to stay home, to mask up, to wash our hands, and to socially distance on pain of death. When we were supposed to open in February, city health officials argued against it and believed a September reopening might be more realistic. In the late winter, during the board meeting to vote on the redistricting plan, some board members even expressed skepticism about the May reopening. Again, conflicting opinions and information. So when the district insisted it was full steam ahead on the May reopening, is it any wonder why teachers were dubious and fearful about our readiness? We have just spent the last year caught in a riptide of conflicting information on all fronts. Yes, the district worked hard to get us vaccinated, but let us remember that the efficacy of these vaccines, while promising, is still speculative. And most of us know that it's not a matter of if someone within a school catches COVID, 
It is a question of how many someones will catch it. One only has to watch what is currently happening in India to realize that while there is light at the end of the tunnel, this- It's Kandish, I need to remind you, you have less than a minute left. Okay. So moving on, imagine my shock when on the evening of Tuesday, April 27th, after my fourth day of working at home, I checked my bank account and saw that my April 30th check had already been deposited into my account and had been docked several hundred dollars. Soon I learned that many of my colleagues who had stood in solidarity with their union had their pay docked as well. This was clearly an act of intimidation and revenge on the part of the district. I find it sad and ironic that this district would deal so heartlessly with the very people who have given so selflessly to the students of Trenton over this past year. Happy Teacher Appreciation Week. Okay, thank you, Ms. Condish. Uh, moving on to the next person, uh, Michelle Marazzo. Good evening. Good evening. First, I wanted to start off by saying that um, at the last board meeting, I was not given the opportunity to speak. And Ms. Lane, you specifically stated that if we sent emails, we would receive a, a response from you. And I did not re receive a response from you or any board member, um, which gives me concern to think that perhaps our concerns aren't even worth an email back. Um, my next question to you is, where are you tonight? because it appears to me that you are all in the comfort of your home. And if you have insisted that all of our buildings are safe, why are you not in one of the 22 buildings? You have your pick of all of them. They're all empty right now. You could very easily be sitting in any one of the rooms. We're allowed to have 12 children in a classroom. There are only seven of you. You could very easily be sitting behind plexiglass with a mask on, just as you would like us to do. And if you would like the community to be behind you, perhaps that's what you should be doing. If you want us to follow your lead, perhaps that's what you should do. Maybe you feel remote learning is not the best because as we speak, we see that many of you can't even look at us on the screen. So perhaps it's not best for you, but you are not our students. Let's address a few things that didn't get addressed in my email. First, let's talk about our grand reopening. In our school on the first day, we had a total of 10 children. That's right, one, zero, 10 children. Our temperature scanner failed. So two entered with fevers and COVID symptoms. So two were sent home. That means that we had a total of eight children. So we opened a full staff, a full building for eight total children. Oh, and the internet in the district was absolutely terrible yesterday, kept freezing which put all students in the district, including all of those that were remote, at a total disadvantage because most teachers were not able to present their slides or teach as it kept on freezing. Seems like the district spent an awful lot of money to open up buildings for a tiny percent of the community that would like to return. Every day, more and more of our parents are calling and contacting the school to switch to the remote option. I guess they don't feel that the teachers are actually doing irreparable damage to their children teaching this way. Interestingly, also, some of our parents also called us these past few days to tell us that they received phone calls from the Board of Education requesting that they switch from remote to hybrid option. And they were upset by these calls. So it almost seems as though the board must be trying to skew their numbers. That also sounds to me like another waste of time and money by the district. Speaking of wasting money, I feel like they may want, the board may want to audit the district to see just how much money was spent on the overtime. That was just how much money was spent on overtime to make sure that all the teacher's pay was docked in this last paycheck, even though we were still working. It amazes me how this was done in days, yet some teachers have yet to be paid for teaching summer school in August or attending summer PDs nine months ago. And the excuse is always that there's not enough people in the building to do this. Also, I believe that the district still owes custodians some retro checks from three years ago. And let's discuss the state of our buildings since we've been inside. The district leadership 
would have you believe that CEA is going after the custodians and the work that they do. That is frankly not true. Health and safety issues are decisions made by, uh, made not by custodians, but made by district leadership. We love our custodians and it is thanks to them that anything happens in the buildings. The board pats themselves on the back for hiring 40 new custodians to help in the schools. But if you had never- uh, Ms. Marazzo, you have less yep. than a minute left. If you had never depleted their staff years ago, this wouldn't be necessary. Last week, Mr. Mosley told you about the, how safe the schools are and how his family works at them. This is true as his wife works with me at Wilson, where we've had water in the basement for two years. Yet, I'm sure that the air consultants did not go down into the musty basement and smell the air or test that air. Um, and as for the injunction, right now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but we have several staff members that are at home quarantining, awaiting COVID results or asymptomatic with COVID. And right now they are unable to teach their students because they have to use their sick days. But due to the ruling, they cannot. So instead, their class is receiving work that they have to complete because we have seen that there are not enough subs to cover the daily absences. So that looks to me like the district is causing irreparable harm, not the teachers. You all should be ashamed of yourselves. You haven't walked through the unprepared schools, you haven't listened to the community, and you have not worked in the best interest of this community. None of you would send your own children here. You wouldn't even gather for a meeting in one of the buildings you insist are ready to open. You're a disgrace to this community and your body language and actions continue to prove that time and time again. Thank you, Ms. Marazza. Mm -hmm. um, so our next speaker is Ms. Walden, Ms. Kathy Walden. Yes, thank you, Ms. Lane, um, for the opportunity to speak again. Um, and thank you for your response to my email um, where you requested that I send my April 26 questions to you. Uh, they were lengthy. Um, I appreciate your reply that Mr. Yano would um, get back to me and answer those questions. I have not received any reply, but as a matter of fact, I have sent both of you an answer to one of my own questions. And so now we all know that 32% of the Trenton population currently is vaccinated. It's less than a third. It's not a comforting statistic, but uh, there's no need for me to um, go into details on any of the other questions. It's obvious that this board and this district is unable to answer them um, and or uninterested in answering them. And they don't care about the numbers or the facts or the science. Um, so let's move on to other areas. There's a lot that I don't need to say because my colleagues have already said it very eloquently. The last three days of opening have been anything but a success. What they're doing is they're pointing out all the areas in which the district is unable to manage its reopening. And I say unable because I can't judge your motivations, board members, or administrators about how much you care or not care about students and staff, but it's very clear that the reopening um, lacks a lot of health and safety. Um, in my own building today at Dunn, we have painters and other um, contractors and workers coming through room by room. Why are we waiting until the first three days of reopening when staff members are supposed to be in their rooms, staying there as healthy and safe as possible. And all of a sudden they hear they have to vacate their room. Uh, because now on April 30th and May uh, 3rd and 4th is the time to paint their rooms. So where do they go? They go to another classroom that's been occupied by another staff member and then if the room's not done in a couple of days, they go to yet another room. And I presume that these workers are going from building to building. They don't just work in my building. And not only that, they refuse to wear their masks or they don't wear them properly. So they're threatening the health and safety. So, you know, somehow this district thinks that it's a good idea to do last minute repairs. We get that, we're used to it, but um, it's not okay when 
it causes cross contamination and too much interaction between individuals in the building that are trying to keep themselves healthy and safe. Shame on you. It is not okay to do last minute HVAC repairs. It is not okay to tell people they have an approved 504 accommodation in the building and they arrive and it's not ready for them. It is not okay to reopen with those kinds of practices. When you could have kept that employee home, if you're not ready to give them the accommodation they need to be safe in the building because you didn't get the electrician there or you didn't get the painter there on, you know, early enough, or you didn't that, I mean, what can we say? Okay, do you know how to reopen these schools or not? And I don't think this board has any clue, any clue at all about how our district administrators are implementing this plan, which looks good in writing. And it probably looks good to the county superintendent and the DOE, but when it comes to carrying it out safely and correctly, grade is F, sorry. And not even a 50, we're talking zero. We have parents coming into the building. Uh, Ms. Walden, you have less than a minute, please finish up. Okay, and the last thing I will say is take the HVAC study off the website. It is nothing but misleading. If you wanna give the public the impression you did a real HVAC study, then go back and have a real HVAC study done and then post it. But, oh, it looks good. It looks good. But if it was just to figure out how big an air purifier you should buy for a certain size room, that doesn't really tell the public anything about whether you did an audit or really analyze the functioning and the efficiency and the quality of our current HVAC systems. Hey, Ms. Walden, I need you to wrap up, please. So take that study down because it's an insult to anybody in the public or the staff that thinks you actually did something that's meaningful to look out for our safety. Um, okay, thank you, Ms. Walden, thank you. All right, at this point, I need to move on to uh, Mr. Uh, John Fort Forte. Yeah, hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, my colleagues have done an excellent job addressing a lot of specific issues. So I just wanna really address this issue of Dr. Pay. But first I wanna say that this is Teacher Appreciation Week, yet my colleagues and I have never felt more disrespected by a district administration, really in our entire careers. I wanna address a few concerns with this docked pay that was able to go through so quickly, yet all of our concerns have been ignored for months. So I just wanna repeat this concern that my um, colleagues raised about the board meetings being held virtually and just point out how blatant the hypocrisy is. And just, you know, this could not be more obvious that this plan to have us go back into buildings was done prematurely. So I just wanna say that there are teachers who were docked pay for taking a legitimate personal day. There are teachers who were docked pay for taking a legitimate sick day. There are teachers who received insubordination letters on the same day that their loved ones died. I just wanna, you know, I'm thinking as a teacher, you would want leadership to model some kind of um, empathy and sympathy and really that didn't happen. I find it concerning that that docking pay would go through in the midst of a pandemic. Student loans are paused, evictions are paused, home foreclosures are paused, internet shutoffs are even paused, right? Even Comcast is shutting off internet pauses, yet docking pay went through without a second thought. So I really find the actions of this central administration be disgusting and heartless. I think this is an attack on working families, teachers with children they need to care of, take care of, teachers with children who need electricity to do their work while they work safely and remotely at home. And frankly, this is an attack on working women because we know that women dominate the, the, the uh, profession of teaching. This school district is very lucky that we as teachers love and care about our students so much as we do because the actions of this district 
are beyond disrespectful. They're reckless and they're damaging, they're unsafe. This is, this is, this is some serious damage the district has done. So while we continue our professional duties and we dedicate ourselves to providing the best instruction to our students, and let me just remind you that the lack of training for hybrid instruction that the district didn't even offer, that was very unprofessional. Um, you know, in the end, I think this point needs to go home that conditions for teachers are conditions for students. These things are not separate. These things, you know, they support e each other and they go vice versa. You can't ignore that. So I just want to stress this enough. Please, please don't say happy, happy teacher appreciation week if you're not going to, you know, restore pay or even address concerns about the pay that's been docked. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Sanisak is actually uh, next. Mr. Ron Sanisak. Okay, not seeing Mr. Sanisak, I'll move on. Um, Ms. Backlund. All right, evening board members. I'll return to saying good evening again when I can honestly say it is a good evening, but tonight it sadly is not. I would like to take a positive moment to wish all the hardworking, dedicated, and talented teachers of the Trenton Public Schools a happy Teachers Appreciation Week. I am proud to say that my entire teaching career has been in Trenton, and I won't be going anywhere anytime soon. I would also like to thank the members of the community that are joining us virtually this evening to show your support. I find it very ironic that we're having this meeting virtually this evening, as you have deemed the buildings healthy and safe to return and students are beginning to enter the classrooms this week. I must say I am personally thrilled that this meeting is virtual because I was generally terrified about the thought of entering a building that has been shut down multiple times throughout this pandemic when it was supposedly following COVID precautions Limiting, visit, vi, limiting visitors to the building and introduce more frequent cleaning routines. I can safely say there have been zero COVID scares because of my house throughout this pandemic. I would also ask that you excuse my tired, exhausted appearance this evening because I will admit this, that the stress and anxiety of returning to the building and teaching students in person and virtually has clearly taken its toll on me. During my day, I now have to watch the clock to make sure I end my lesson on time because as a high school art teacher, I no longer have an art room to call my own. So every hour I have to push my cart through the hallway of students and other floating teachers to my next room, set up as I greet students in person and try to log into my meet on time for the majority that chose to remain virtual. Keep in mind, I'm lucky to have five minutes to do this while other schools did not give specialists travel time in between classes. I ask you board members, would you accept having to take each of your meetings in a different conference room throughout your day while having to shuffle your belongings through the hallways in front of your colleagues and others? During two of my classes, while the students are working, I stare and wonder what could possibly fall out of the missing ceiling tiles and from the depths of the roof above me as I gaze at the water stains, hoping that they are dry and not new from the recent rain we had. I ask you board members, would you, accept, would you accept having these conditions in your workspace? So again, please excuse my appearance this evening for I am thoroughly worn down trying to follow the plan you set in place. The roster that we have, you're all... We're here this evening because Trenton is yet again seeking a candidate for a superintendent position. As you interview and seek the next candidate, I truly hope a qualified candidate with the background and skill set the community can be proud of and celebrate for years to come is chosen. Not someone who traditionally uses Trenton as a checklist and stopping point on their career. Our students deserve better than that. I previously spoke about my childhood superintendent, Dr. Ware, and I hope that we seek someone like that for our future. Like I said earlier, my entire career, my entire teaching career has been in Trenton Public Schools, and I have always been proud of that fact because the students I teach consistently amaze me. They are so creative. The teachers I work with are passionate about their subjects, 
and I generally enjoy what I do and could not imagine being anywhere else. However, since I have been in Trenton, I cannot even remember the names of all the superintendents because so many have come and gone without leaving any lasting impression on me. And I've only been here since 2009 and my memory is still pretty good. For the future of Trenton- Ms. Backlund, I need you to finish up, please. You have less than a half minute. Okay, I'll try. For the future of Trenton, I hope the board takes the time to select an individual who will put children first, like our district motto states. And I highly doubt the person would have sent staff and students back into the schools this week with the condition they're in. I hope the next superintendent backs and listens to the science and data that is being reported daily and isn't swayed and blinded by political aspirations, personal agendas, or blatant lies. I hope the next superintendent actually listens to and engages with the community and what they want and need. I hope that they support the teachers that are on the front lines, educating and supporting students every day. And I hope that they actually care about the students and their futures. That is the type of individual Trent needs and deserves. Is that the type you're going to select? Right now, the board members have a decision to make what they to make that will greatly alter the future of the Trenton Public Schools and ultimately the community of Trenton. I ask okay, Ms. Backlund, I need you to finish up, please. Okay, as I wrap up, I wanna point out again that this previous board meeting, it was indicated that when students return to learning, that board meetings would return to in-person again, yet here we are on Zoom. If everyone on the board honestly believes that the buildings are healthy and safe enough for students and teachers with missing ceiling tiles and et cetera, why are we still virtual? Thank you for allowing me to speak this evening and I'll see you next time. All right, thank you. All right, at this time, Ms. Janice Williams. Thank you. And I hope I'm allotted uh, the five minutes or more because some people went over their time. Point one, many members on this board of education suffer from a lack of leadership syndrome. Your first problem is that the ones appointed are qualified not to lead. The second mistake is believing that the ones that are appointed are qualified ones to lead. There are a number of you who are seated on this board who do not have a vested interest in our students or community. Many of you are invisible. You rarely attend school events or district activities. One is even missing on a regular basis. Two of you live in the city of Trenton, yet you refuse to send your child to our school. Why is that? Would you allow your child to attend schools that were not safe or healthy? I think not. Point two, alternative facts. This leadership team has been good at putting out alternative facts versus the truth. Here's one truth. One of your assistant superintendents stated to TEA and his leadership team that there is no advantage to having kids come back to recoup learning loss or SEL. None of that would be accomplished in the time period given. We just need to get them back because, that's what one of your assistant superintendents said. We just need to get them back because. Alternative fact two, the survey results were misleading. Parents were confused in responses given to the survey. Of the 4,277 surveys received, 2,500 wanted remote, 1,800 wanted hybrid. Where is Ms. Grant getting her numbers from that day, 4,277 wanted to report back to hybrid instruction. We have the document with the breakdown. Point three. Now, let's talk about the reopening plan you submitted to the injunction job, judge as part of your brief and the one you submitted to DOE that contradict one another. Why does this district not have a universal plan that governs all district schools. Why has each school been allowed to develop its own reopening plan, causing mass confusion among teachers and staff? An example, signing procedures differ from school to school, yet the district sent out directions and various schools are now using different protocols. All signing procedures should be universal to avoid confusion. Yes, take notes, Alfonso, temperature check. Procedures vary from school to school, but we like confusion in this district. It works best for us. Point four, 
At this time, Trenton probably has the highest administrative cost in Mercer County. Education dollars are best spent educating kids and least effectively use building out further educational bureaucracy, such as the approval on last month's agenda to embellish central leadership with the superintendent, three assistant superintendents, two directors, and a litany of supervisors, while at the same time, unable to hire a new superintendent who may not see the need for this structure. Did you ever consider that or did Yano hang you out to dry while he complicated whether to take your offer or the one in Byron? The expressions on your faces when that was announced was priceless. Who zoomed who? Point number five. There are people on this district's central leadership team who think they are master manipulators, who need to control everything and manipulate everyone. Newsflash, taking away teachers' money in which they earn because they taught remotely, which they will eventually get back, was not the answer. Remember, you may have gotten away with what you wanted to, but at the expense of others, which will damage relationships. And lastly- Ms. Williams, you have a minute left. I know I do. If I'm not interrupted, I will be able to finish. Thank you. Last, we have two board general council, councils who make over six figures. And when you include their fringe benefits, make over $300,000 or more. Yes, and I have opened it. You have those two individuals still outsourcing work to Perry's firm. If we have employed four general counsels who are not capable or able to do the work in which their salary is assigned, then remove them and we may as well pay Perry's firm the $500,000 because we are right now in an arbitration where we have two attorneys from Perry's firm who will be litigating this for at least 10 days or more. Now I solicited the bill invoices and I know they're gonna be astronomical, but if we have general board counsel, if they're not able to conduct your business and for the last few years they continue to outsource work, then we need to question that. And this leadership team, I'm looking at the expressions on your face. Alfonso, in parting words to do, shame, shame, shame on you. The same way that you go up, one day you may have to come down that same way. And trust me, trust and believe, teachers are calling us from violence. And we're gonna give them the true picture Alfonso Yano, you may have zoomed the board because they were quite taken back with your dishonesty about, am I going to take violence? Am I going to take the Trenton Board of Education? But they deserve to be zoomed because they did not conduct the superintendent search process the correct way. Again, they're still behind the eight ball because they don't know what they're doing. Again, board members, you think you are leaders, but you suffer from leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you. All right. So let's move to the next person. Thank you. The next person is Ms. Talithia Duncan. Talithia Duncan. Okay, I'm going to move on, but I'll come back. Uh, Sandra Jimenez. Sandra Jimenez, Chantel Wooten. Chantel Wooten, uh, John Gindon. Hello, um, good evening board members and community. Tonight, I would like to talk about accountability especially with regards to the Board of Education and Central Administration. Something that I've been asking for since I entered the district in the last days of Dr. Lytle 20 years ago. Again, I am bringing to the public's attention the need for an explanation from the Board of Education on why we still have virtual meetings. I think that the teaching staff deserves an explanation in light of being docked um, pay for teaching virtually while looking after their own health and safety concerns. As you have claimed in the papers, in the public, and in the courts, that the buildings are safe. And also, Ms. Lane has also mentioned that she also said that 
we would come back together in live meetings once everyone has returned, which everyone has returned. Then why, again, I ask, are we meeting virtually? We deserve an, es an explanation, especially since you have dug into our pockets for the same exact reason, because we worked virtually. Again, where is your accountability? Secondly, I would like to address the misrepresentation of board council as, per as to pertain to TEA's position with regards to health and safety issues just recently addressed in court. When we brought up the fact that we needed things, it was in regards to teaching synchronously. Even the person you hired to demonstrate synchronous teaching had many more tools at their disposal than we do. To clear up the matter, every time, and those of you that were on the board's negotiation team, you know the truth, and that's all I have to say about that. But every single time, the issue was brought to your attention. I, myself, one of the co-chairs of the negotiation team, on every single occasion, restated our position that none of these things matter if the health and safety issues were not addressed first. That is the truth. But you took it out of context and lied just to prove your weak case. Again, where is your accountability? Finally, I think it's inexcusable for people to have been docked pay and be labeled unprofessional that have given their life and dedication to this school district because they were looking out for their own health and safety and taught from home. There was even a moment during that stretch where the district lost internet and instruction was still being delivered to those kids of Trenton. You're welcome. But instead, how are we welcomed? Our pay gets docked because of egos of, of certain individuals in central leadership. I thought it was fascinating how quickly people were docked before their last paycheck was dispersed. And yet our and yet there are dedicated staff who worked the previous summer who still haven't got paid for their time. Okay. I am baffled again at some people when some people actually want to get something done, it gets done. Yet people who worked last summer are still waiting to be paid for their labors. Again, where is the accountability? I wait, I will wait patiently for a response for the Board of Education with regards to the issues that I've brought to your attention tonight. I hope I don't have to wait as long as those who are still waiting to be paid for the services last summer. Thank you for your op thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Mr. Gendon, Dr. Gendon. Um, at this time, I'm moving to the next person. The next person would be um, Mr. Darren Freedom Green. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes. To the interim superintendent, board president, Ms. Hattie, board members and to the community, thank you for allowing me to speak. Three quick points. I think we need to be speaking with the collective voice from our congresswoman to our senator, to our county executive, to all local elected officials that Trent School District needs new schools. We cannot repair archaic old schools that are over hundred years old. Other than Kilmer, MLK and the new high school, those buildings have been deplorable. We know that all the conditions that existed in the Trenton High when we demolished it exist in those buildings now. And we should be using the banner of COVID to bring in the millions of dollars and resources to get our teachers, get our babies to the schools they deserve. That's my first point. We shouldn't be trying to repair things that are over 100 years old. We need new schools. And if we're speaking as a collective voice, I think we'll have the leverage to begin to do that. Second, I think when we begin to talk about the seven homicides that have occurred in this city, it is a part of failed governance where the mayor, the council, and the people have not gotten on the same page. But part of that, if I may be honest, is an extension of the school system, which has historically not empowered, not engaged the young people and their parents and the community members here, where we're walking around and we're lost in our own community, which is 7.5 square miles. The school system should be at war with the social issues the institutional construction and constructional abuse, that, uh, racism that goes on. Our war can't be with the teachers and the administration and the leadership has to get on the same page. Docking pay at this time really cut, cuts and cuts an erosion 
to the very culture of the teachers who were asking to go to war to save the babies we all say we love. I just think it was a tactless move. And I think at a time when we need our teachers to give more, we're really, really cutting at their, their morale. And I, I was saddened to hear that. We've got to do better in that area. We need our teachers and we should be supporting them because they've gone through hell and the babies who we love are going through hell and we're gonna need our teachers to reach them. My last point is a very simple one. I think we've gotten to a place where we really need to understand where we are as a district and began to fortify our efforts and again, when we look at it, I want to salute Mr. Yano and I wish him well where he's going. We often ask why are the babies so disrespectful? It's because they learn from adults who are comfortable being disrespectful. I have nothing nasty or negative to say to Mr. Yano. I wish him well and the best. And if his destiny was tied into Trenton, then he couldn't leave here. So I wish him well where he's going. And I would say again, when we began to sit down and talk about a, a new superintendent, we need to talk about somebody who was all for and about Trenton. I'll respect Miss Addy and not name names, but you know who I'm talking about. You have a process to follow and go on. But I'm tired of seeing people leave here, and I'm tired of seeing people who I know can, can run this place here not be given an opportunity to do so. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Mr. Green. All right. Um, I'm looking around, and we're just about finished. Uh, Judy Martinez. Ms. Martinez. There I go. There you go. OK. There we go. Good evening, board members, leadership, and Trenton community. Good evening. The Trenton Board of the Trenton Public School District used to want to be a community setting amongst their employees in the past, but this district would prefer to divide and conquer method. I, for one, am not of that mindset. So I would first like to acknowledge the passing of the Tessa longtime member and former vice president, Ann Scarada. Ann was, Ann passed away on March 22nd, 2001. She worked for the district for 46 years and was the vice president of Tessa for over 25 years. She dedicated her life to the working for Tessa even after she retired from the district. She was a fierce leader who fought long and hard to represent the unit as a whole. She will be missed by all of us. I would also like to acknowledge the passing of Lakira Jones, who worked for the district in the Human Resource Department, and Lillian De La Cruz, who was a child study team member and a district employee for over 25 years. All of them deserve mentioning and being acknowledged, which the district did not do. I thank you for that. I want to address so many things this evening but I know I have limited time. First, let me address the secretaries being in the building since July of 2020. The past week, I have listened to the district battle with TEA on their concerns with returning to the buildings. And I have heard the members of leadership make comments that the secretaries have been in the building since July. I wanna make it very clear. Tessa did not support returning to the buildings or extending the number of days in the buildings that was open. From the beginning of this pandemic, we submitted a demand to bargain for our health and safety and it fell on deaf ears. Tessa members did not have a choice in returning to the buildings. We were told we had to go back to the buildings in July of 2020. And when members did not show up due to their health, and being at high risk, they were docked for their pay. And before the district starts to say that that did not happen, I have copies of the secretary's pay stubs. To this day, they still have not been paid, even though they worked that day. Tessa has brought our issues to the board meetings since July of 2020. And every board meeting and every time we state our issues that were in the building, the district told the board members they looked into it and there were no issues. And now here we are of April, 2021, and still issues are being brought to the board members. Since the district opened our building in July, over and over again, buildings were closed due to COVID exposure. And we worked in the district, would not find out about the exposure until days after the buildings were closed. The district now wants to use the secretaries in the battle with TEA, stating that secretaries have been in the building working. 
was not by choice. Stop making comments about how much secretaries are valued so much for a job well done when you continuously abuse our loyalty and dedication to this district. We are understaffed and overworked. This district has taken advantage of the secretaries for years, abolishing our jobs and creating program managers, generalists, coordinators. All of that work was once done by Tessa secretaries. Our concerns go unheard, unanswered, our grievances are not being heard, our arbitrations that are won and still waiting to be paid out are not being addressed. We have not heard any information concerning the payout of our case 0116-0040279, which was an arbitration that we won. Those secretaries are still waiting to be paid. Are reopening going smoothly? That's questionable. I guess it depends on who you ask. I personally spent the last two days on the phone, the entire work day, helping my Spanish speaking families that were confused about filling out a health form. So they changed their mind and decided their children weren't coming back into the building. I'm the only secretary in a building with 546 students, and 80% of them being bilingual families. The phone rings off the hook. The parents are showing up at the buildings, even though everything's supposed to be by appointments. Students need replacement computers, chargers stop working. Now the teachers are back in the building and they need things. All of this is happening. And at the same time, now we have to begin registration for kindergarten next year. Uh, Ms. Martinez, I need you to finish up, yes, please. Thank you. The board agenda for April 26 was filled with new directors and supervisor positions. But what happened to the secretary's positions that they were supposed to create to help the schools out that need secretarial help? We can't continue to just blame district leadership when it's the board members that approve all the new creations without questions. This district has been pushing the reopening of the buildings to students, parents, staff. But when are you going to open the buildings for the board meetings? When are the board meetings going to be back into the buildings? If the buildings have been ready for staff to return, why are they, the board meetings, not being held in the board building auditorium? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Okay, we're actually out of time. Um, I'm gonna to try to squeeze in one more person, but we are out of time. Um, we do have a schedule that follows um, after this particular point. I'm gonna to try to squeeze in one more person. Uh, Ms. Marisol uh, Tirado. Okay, last person is Lydia uh, uh, Thornton. Thank you, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you, um, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I've been attending meetings back when they were in person, now that they're virtual, for some years now. And one of the things, particularly on this virtual side that amazes me, is something you just said. And that's the fact that we're out of time for public comments. I fail to understand when the board works for the citizens of Trenton, the children of Trenton, how there can be a time limit on public comments. I understand that meetings have limits, but not, a, not board, not council meetings, not school board meetings, no. They go as long as there's a need for the public to speak or hear what's being said. I had a very long conversation today with someone from the Trenton Board of Education who I will not name, but who I'm grateful for their information. And there's a few other people that um, are gr gracious and generous in sharing information with me, but I have concerns at a, as a citizen of the city. I have concerns as someone who has children who live in my home, who aren't even ready yet to come to school because they're too little, what they're going to come into in a couple of years. Because 
for all that I cannot get inside your heads or hearts and question your intent, the board appears from a public perspective to simply nod and say, okay, and move on to everything. I haven't heard a question asked of each other or of a report that is critical or you know, really needs a, a deep explanation, a deep dive in years. Now, maybe those are all held offline and maybe that's part of the problem that we, the public, don't see the back and forth. We don't see the conversations. We only see the end result. So we don't understand what went into making certain decisions. They're presented to us as fait accompli. And someone very early on in public comments today said, you know, one thing we need, I apologize, one thing we need is a, an audit. I've been saying that for about two years now because I've looked at the budget. I've looked at the budget year over year and it makes no sense. It makes no sense in a seven square mile city how we're spending millions and millions and millions of dollars on transportation. When you look at it deeper, it's because we're sending so many children out of district. That's not a positive aspect on our district's ability to educate the children the way they need to be educated, that we have to send so many out and pay for them to go out. Two years ago, your per child average budget for books was $153. I have run a bookstore, a college bookstore, which I promise you high school books are about as expensive as college books. And there is no way we are getting our children new books every three or four years on that kind of number. Okay, uh, Ms. Says, Thornton, Ms. Yes, Thornton I'm going to need you to um, wrap up, please. Of course. Thank you for the reminder. I'm asking, we've had to in the past year change everything. This wasn't gonna be a smooth opening because we've never done this before. And I'll give everybody a break on that piece. But what I will ask you in my last 30 seconds, Ms. Lane, listen to what everybody said tonight. Listen to the concerns, walk through the schools again. Walk through with some of these folks who talk to you tonight and see what they're seeing. Because you may be being given a really pretty version of what reality is. Thank you for letting me speak, Ms. Lane, and please expand public portion of this. Please. Right, thank you, Ms. Thornton. Okay, and so. Lane, um, um, you have uh, Marisol, her, her line was connected. She just couldn't unmute. She's okay. connected right now, Marisol. Okay. All right. Can, I don't. Can you hear me? Uh. Yeah. I, oh. Okay. Yeah. I, I hear you. Okay. Okay. Yes, Good yes, evening, Mr. everyone. Prado. Thank you, Mr. Yano. Um. I signed up to speak at the last board meeting. However, due to the amount of public participants, uh, Tessa did not get the opportunity to do so. I'm going to start with a couple items on the last board agenda. I am aware that they were already approved. On the April 27th board agenda, there was a program manager position created for the bilingual department. However, you approve the creation without the job description being included in that board agenda. I went through the job descriptions attached to that agenda, and that was the only position that did not currently exist that had no job description. How did you approve a newly created position without seeing the job description? You also created 10 administrative positions and two secretarial positions. Though we appreciate the two secretarial positions, we all know that the district is short staffed and support staff, and we are all aware that the district is getting a lot more additional funding. Last school year, the previous superintendent, Mr. Lee, created 11 additional school secretarial positions for the 2020-2021 school year, for this existing school year. 
He recognized that the schools originally had two secretaries and were down to one, but the work of two was still there. He acknowledged that we were overworked and short-staffed. He followed through on his word and made sure it was on the April 27, 2021 board agenda and 11 additional secretary positions were board approved for the 2020-2021 school year. Then COVID hit and we were informed that due to budget cuts, unfortunately, we could not get those positions. Now, however, budget cuts are no longer an issue. You're getting a lot more funding for this school year. It is clear with your newly created additional administrative positions that you are ready to spend in some areas. I ask that you invest in your support staff and create those much needed additional secretarial positions for the 21-22 school year. You have departments that also need secretarial support that had secretarial staff in years past and those positions were cut. Those departments still exist, therefore the work still exists. Buildings and grounds for one have four administrative secretaries and three administrators. You now have no secretarial staff in the buildings and grounds department. Just judging by this current school year with all of the attention the buildings and grounds department has had in the last year alone, it is clear that the work still exists even more so and that you need secretarial support staff. For years, Tessa has spoken publicly in meetings with leadership about being short staffed and overworked. And for years, the district and board has acknowledged the need. We are always hearing that we are the front line. When you wanted us to report back to the buildings during COVID, whether we felt safe or not, whether, th whether things were in place or not, while still expressing our concerns, we were directed to return. We've been in the buildings since July, 2020. In countless meetings, you continue to stress the importance of our secretaries in the buildings. We needed to be there to attend to our administrators, the public, to our parents, our students, the community. However, when it comes to putting your money where your mouth is, nothing. With your actions, you show that you have no respect for your support staff and see no value in us. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, unfortunately, um, we have another person that got kicked off the call. So um, Ms. Duncan, um, if you could very quickly, I'm sorry, we, we don't have, we don't, we're actually out of time, but I certainly wanna give an opportunity to speak. So if you could do that quickly, I'd appreciate it. Ms. Duncan. Ms. Duncan? It looks like she was talking, but um, it was we can't hear her. Okay, and now she's, I don't know. So, can you hear me? Uh, not clearly. Can you hear me? Not clearly. Hello? Can't hear you Eddie, clearly. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Nope. <laughs> no, we can't. I'm talking in the car. Can you hear me? Okay, now we can. Now we Hello? Can. Go ahead. Hello? Uh, can you go. hear me now? Yes, go ahead. All right. So, um, I just want to um, apologize. I know you guys probably called me. Um, I have an emergency with my mom, and I'm at in the parking lot. And therefore, um, I wanted to speak about transparency once again with this superintendent search. For example, today you guys are holding a special meeting to have interviews with superintendent candidates. We still have not heard who the four finalists was. And now that Mr. Yano has decided to take it, take the job in Vineland, we don't know who the other people are because there has been no transparency, no union leader. I will also echo the concerns of all my members that have spoken about, as well as the board attorney, Mr. Roll and uh, Ms. Jane, that progressive discipline does not go from zero to 100. You went from Thursday to a Monday to doctor people during a pandemic when you know people have bills to pay and people's situations may be what, what, whatever it may be. Ms. Condes put it perfectly. We've used our personal cell phones. 
We've used our personal Wi-Fi. We've never asked the district, despite what James put out in the court hearing on last Thursday, that this was a money issue for our members to be reimbursed. You never want put on a board agenda to reimburse any of our members for their monthly Wi-Fi use during these past 14 months. You never want put on the board agenda to um, give members money for using their personal phone to call parents. Not once have you thought about our members. And I will uh, reiterate what I don't remember who said it because I'm dealing with other stuff at the time, that you all have not still paid people from August days. Why is it that you can take money from our members, but you may about the August again, and some of our members have not been paid? I'm going to pass Tehran once again. How are you making a selection for a permanent superintendent, and you never called any of the union leadership people to the table? I'm going to make a, I'm not, not a plea, a demand that you return the doc pay to our members who were affected because they did work and had they not stayed home to work remotely due to district bandwidth issues they wouldn't our children would have an interruption in the delivery of instruction on last monday as well as this monday there have been confirmed from people on the front line not people that sit on central leadership Okay, seems like, okay, um, can't hear you now. Miss Lane? Yes. Can you hear? Can you hear? Okay, yeah, now I can, but I'm going to have to ask you to wrap up because we're really on overtime right now. I, I'll wrap up, but like I said before, I'm going to ask that you restore all of the members' pay because the district, which was one of our concerns, that was not a money concern, that the district did not have the proper bandwidth to provide instruction um, to our members, um, to our students. Um, had our teachers not stayed home on last Monday, students in Trenton would not have received instruction until about 11 a.m. And then even this Monday, we had bandwidth concerns, which were not monetary concerns, which, which you guys stated in the court case on Thursday. So therefore, be transparent in the superintendent process and give our people our money back because they work and they help you continue with the uh, delivery of instruction, unlike you all, because you did not make sure you were properly prepared with bandwidth issues, custodian issues, and temperature and COVID screening issues as well. Thank you and have a good night. All right. Thank you, Ms. Duncan. Okay, so that concludes our public participation um, session or section. And so uh, certainly your concerns are noted. And by the time we get to a regular uh, board meeting, then we will address some of the concerns that may be still outstanding. At this point in time, uh, I'm going to um, read a motion for um, the executive session resolution. And then I'm going to ask for a motion to go into executive session. Uh, first of all, executive session resolution, May 4th, 2021, whereas the Open Public Meetings Act codified as NJSA 104-6 permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting under certain circumstances, and whereas the Trenton Board of Education is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, indicated as follows. Any material which would constitute an unwarranted invasion of individual privacy if disclosed. Matters captioned, interview candidates for superintendent of schools. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Trenton Board of Education, County of Mercer, State of New Jersey, uh, that an executive session will be held on May 4th, 2021, for the statutorily permissible purposes indicated in this resolution. Be it further resolved that the action may be taken by the board when it reconvenes an open section and again, session. Matters captioned again, interview candidates for superintendent of schools. Be it finally resolved that the minutes of the executive session with regard to the above subject matter shall be disclosed to the public at a later date and to the extent that the same is not prejudicial to the interest of the parties involved, no longer adverse to the public interest or does not endanger any individual's right to privacy. I need a motion to adjourn to executive session. So moved. Second, roll call, Jean Bowie. Yes. 
Nicole Bichois. Yes. Yolanda Lopez. Yes. Teron McKnight. Yes. Gerald Trueheart. Yes. Jeannie Weaklem. Yes. Sade Williams, absent. Addie Daniels Lane. Yes. Motion to go into exec session. Thank you.